on the phone, hey man, and then you catch them on Facebook, they downtown getting their groove on. I remember when the Osley brothers was going through the nation early in the morning, they was having these jam fests about six or seven in the morning. These folk were showing up. My God, they were getting tipsy and everything before they go to work. Some of them didn't make it to and all in sick. And supervisor, all they had to do was wait and look at the Isley Brothers show. Y'all remember that when it was on? T- okay. So I'm saying all that to say that being a person who leads has its drawbacks. That's why so many are afraid to step up. Because leadership ain't for, if you, if you got a light complex, you need to stay out of this. If you're so thin-skinned that anybody don't like you, you going home, you need to leave this alone. Amen. This ain't for you. <laughs> See? Because the enemy will have you starting ministries. That's why all these ministries on the YouTube, on the, they, everybody got a ministry. I got this kind of ministry. Go to church somewhere. Go hook up with Reverend Brown. Go hook up with Reverend Lee. Go hook up with Reverend Thomas. Uh, go hook up. You everybody got I got I'm the this is the call out for the for the nations right here in my living room. You know, go go to church somewhere. The problem is you mad at Aaron and Moses. <laughs> this ain't for everybody. Some people I was hurt in church. Well, they might have told you to sit down. And the Bible says behave yourself in the house of God. Maybe you was out of order. Go to church somewhere. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you sitting there bashing all the churches and the preachers, and you don't go to nobody's church. Anybody trying to listen to you? You go do what that preacher did. Some of y'all need to go back to your pastors and beg his pardon. Amen. Say, forgive me Amen. for my stubborn self. Amen. Y'all make like ever Moses and Aaron try to violate at you. Ask you for some secret love or something. Get out of here. It's pride. Amen. You got a gift, but you at home playing by yourself. Drum playing the drums by yourself. Go to church. You know they need the drums. You can play the piano, but you're going to play it at home because you're proud. Amen. You can sing, but you won't get in the choir because they won't make you the leader. Amen. You sing the blues. You got to hum yourself. Come to rehearsal on time. And all the requirements. Hello, somebody. Amen. Go to church somewhere. Everything ain't about you. You got to learn how to follow before you can lead. Amen. Too many people watching on Facebook. I mean, you know, I be thinking we need to take it off. Somebody say, like, we don't need Facebook. I know that. But what you, what you do, the people can hear you. Very few people come to church that's watching Facebook. That's right. We up here got to bite our tongue because people are sitting at home in the bed watching Facebook. The devil is a liar. We got to polish up some stuff we shouldn't have to polish because you sitting up in the bed eating your cornflakes watching Facebook. Go to church somewhere. You got to come here. Go somewhere and humble yourself. You got that much revelation. The pastor needs you. The church needs you. The body needs you. But you can't come in there and run stuff, Cora. We know you're anointed, but go to church somewhere. (laughs) Well, I'm being nice today. I'm being nice, but I'm telling the truth. That's why I be thinking, let's just cut it off. But it was, you people, I mean, I watch you. So what? They don't watch me. Some people watch it, and they're serious. But a lot of people, they just flick you off when you preach like I preach. Man, forget that. Let's turn to something else. What's on Netflix? Come on, put that down. Let's watch Netflix. So, 
I'm going to preach anyway. Right. I preach more years without Facebook than with Facebook. Amen. I've been doing this nearly 50 years. We just got this new technology. Amen. All technology ain't good either. That's right. That's right. Well, we cut it off, all of us. Maybe somebody will say, you know what? Mm, I think I ought to go to church sometimes. <laughs> but God in his mercy trying to reach you. You just came out of a night of, I don't see nothing wrong. Now you're going to watch Facebook, think you're going to fix all that. You need to get on your knees and pray. Say amen. amen. Hey, if you done spent a night R. Kelly and I don't see nothing wrong, watching Facebook ain't going to fix your situation now. Amen. I'm going to tell you. Amen. You need to get on your knees and say, Lord, take the I don't see nothing wrong out of me. Because next side is coming. Amen. Go to church. Let me tell you one thing. Jesus ain't scared of sinners. Right. He love them. Amen. Okay, let's finish this up. He told them in verse 11, For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Why are you murmuring against the man that's trying to help me? The person that's trying to help me. The person, be it male or female, that's closest to me. We got women in ministry now. Why are you murmuring against those who will be with you, with Moses, in his beck and call? Amen. Who were murmuring was his mouthpiece. Y'all don't want me to preach. You want me to hurry up and quit. But listen. Why are you murmuring against the one that will go tell you, here is what Moses said do. Most of us, who you, who he, who she think they is. Moses better come tell me himself. See, Aaron was part of it. Because Moses didn't talk well. Amen. That's right. And sometimes somebody else can say what you're trying to say better. But if you beat up all of our errands, then Moses got to grab that staff and say, Lord, I've been on my face and this is how, 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 how it's going. Let me tell you something. God hears the prayers of a mother and a father when they're praying for their kids. And don't you ever think God don't hear the prayers of a preacher. You who are called to preach, you better get that in your spirit. You better know that. You better know that when people attack your life, that God will do crazy things to them. I'm not trying to intimidate you or scare you. I'm telling you that God has to protect his messenger. Amen. I don't know why he brought it to my attention, but he brought it to my attention yesterday. I ain't thought about this in 25 years. I had a barbecue restaurant over on 10th Street here in Oklahoma City, Midwest City. And one night, we closed at 9 o'clock. He brought this to my attention yesterday to show me how much he loved me and he protect me. But one night at 9 o'clock, we were closing. Like one or, one or two minutes to 9 o'clock, I was there by myself. You know, it had gotten slow. I sent my sons who helped me and sent them home. And, and I'm, I'm there working. This dude shows up with a ski mask on. Now, I come out the kitchen. Right there uh, where the Chinese place is shut down. I come out the kitchen and this dude standing there with a ski mask on. Look at me. And I, I just kind of, hey, hey, man, what's up? I didn't even think about he was going to rob me. But he with a ski mask on. He came, he looked to the left, looked to the right and got nervous and ran out. And the Lord told me yesterday, he said, I love you so much that I protect you. You didn't know, but that man came to rob you. He had a weapon. That's what he told me. He said, you forgot about that, didn't you? I was like, God, I forgot about that. He said, yeah, he came to rob you. But my presence is what made him know this, this ain't a wise thing to do. He was a soul brother, too. Came to rob me. See, when you walk with God, he set his angels around about you. Y'all don't want to hear nothing. 
Y'all don't want to hear nothing. He set his angels around about you. It ain't that you can't fall like other men, but they're there that when you get weak, they're done it for Jesus. They'll help you up when you dash your foot against a stone. When you come to a hard area, you can't walk. Those of you who are called by God, you're not by yourself. I wish I could get a church to say amen. He set his angels around him. I don't know, and I wish I could tell you that the man saw big old angels, this and that, because I do know angels do walk with me. I know angels walk with me. Hey, if you don't know it, then that's on you, but they walk with me. They come to me. They are messengers of the Most High God. And when you, when you deal with that, you know that I don't have to be afraid. That's why you can go be a witness, because you can say like Jesus, my time ain't come yet. That's why when sickness comes, you can say this sickness is not unto death because my time ain't come yet. That's why you can be bold. Because can't no man kill you. Matter of fact, the Bible says if you drink any deadly thing, it's Superman. Hello, somebody. Can't poison me. Food poison ain't going to kill me. And you either, when you're walking in covenant with God. Oh, I wish I could get an amen here. The monkey shine done come into the earth. The monkey pox done come into the earth now. Something else for y'all to get nervous about. <laughs> Not monkey shine. <laughs> There's a lot of monkey shine going on. But the monkey pox done come into the earth. Oh, something else for you to get nervous about. <laughs> you know, we grew up, all of us had the chicken pox. You know, some of us, I got it, had, had it. You know, yeah, chicken pox, it was bad. But they showing people now, they got cases in America, all over America, even in the state we're in, the monkey pox. Now, what you going to do about that? Plagues is in the land. You know why? Because people are disobedient. But let the monkey pox come, let the, the, the gorilla pox come, let it all come. I'm covered with the blood. Some of y'all need to go preach and tell somebody how good God is. That's how he give you extended life. I get paid for this. My faith bills. When I go to the corner, look ridiculous, sitting out under 10 and 100 degrees weather. I ain't gimmicking. I'm sitting there saying, Lord, if one will stop, I will pray. I will. You know why? Because I know heaven wants everybody to be saved. <laughs> Clap your hands real quick for Jesus. Verse 12, Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which says, we will not come. So when Moses called them, they said, we will not come. Oh, man, somebody, somebody needs to get this. There's a lot of pastors saying, come back to church. Amen. He was a prophet when he laid his hands on you and said, thus said the Lord, thou shalt prosper. We're going to get the job. You're going to get the promotion. But then that spirit get in you. And now he says, Come back to church. And what did they say? We will not come. What are people saying everywhere? Amen. I ain't coming. I ain't going. What you waiting on? The sky to be on fire? Nuclear bombs to fall? Oh, let me tell you something. You coming. Just like they didn't come to Noah, but they came. You coming. You may not come in peacetime because you don't want to hear what Moses and Aaron is saying, but you coming. <laughs> All you anointed vessels who are long rangers, Moses is calling you. All you singers, Moses is calling you. Come out the club. You're going to be in the club and a Christian too. That's God's gift, not yours. Come out the club. 
All you piano players, organ players, uh, saxophone players, come out the club. Amen. Moses and Aaron is coming, calling you. Amen. And you saying, I will not come. I'm not going to church. What's wrong with you? Let's praise the Lord real quick. Amen. You ought to get up and put your shoes, you ought to put your clothes out, lay them out like you're going to preschool, night before, your short pants and all, man, and jump in them rascals in the morning, eat breakfast, and I'm going to the church. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to judge you for coming to the church. They're going to judge me. Ain't nobody judging you. This word judges us all. Amen. We was all sinners. Amen. Some of us was good at it, too. Let me see the hands of all them was good at it. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> you was good at it. Yeah. You <laughs> but you got to go. Man, that Lord, your arm's too short to box with God. God got to box you in a place. Where you say, what you want, Lord? What you want? He said, I want your soul. I ain't got no clothes. I didn't call you for your clothes. I want you. Amen. Amen. Some of the greatest prophetess I know were women who were prostitutes. Amen. They will tear this place up in every place they go because they've been down, down there. God ain't looking for no cute people. God looking for some available people. Hello, somebody. Amen. Okay, come on, let's do it. In verse 13, it is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that flowed with milk and honey to, to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. So you're bringing us up, but you think you're a prince over us. And that's why a lot of that's why you don't want to be a pastor real quick unless you're ready for it, because people are going to think that you want to be a prince over them. Amen. Some of us can't run our own business. Yeah, and the Bible says if a man can't take care of his own house, how can he take care? So you need to be careful about that. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into land that flowed with milk and honey or given us inheritance of field and vineyard without put out the eyes of these men. We will not come up. In other words, ain't nothing happening in my life. I joined this ministry. I joined that church. And uh, uh, nothing happened. The church fell out. People leaving. My God. That's all they was talking about. You know what? Uh, I came out of a, a, a good place. And I went there. But they, them folk don't want to be fixed. They don't want nothing. De -de 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 -de. So I'm not coming up. Man, you, that's, that spirit is old as the earth. Amen. Because what they're saying is, I don't have my inheritance. I don't have the recognition that belongs to me. I want to be first chair on the piano. So I'm not coming. They ain't paying me enough. You know how much money churches done paid these pimps on the, on the ivory? Y'all don't even want me to talk about that. God gave you the gift, but you can't go nowhere unless they pay you. Yeah. We preach for nothing for years. Oh, I better be quiet. I'm getting excited. You can't play till you get paid. It ain't your gift. Yeah, we have to pay you too. We don't have to, but a lot of times we do. But the truth is, you ought to be paying us. Take the money and won't even pay tithes on it. I ain't mad because, you know, ain't nobody playing. I'm saying, ask anybody that tried to have a church. Oh, brother, so and sister, so and you play. And what's your fee? Well, how much money y'all make? We make about five hundred a month. I'll take four fifty. <laughs> Egg roll, please. Ask somebody. 
Try to start a church in the black community. You got to have somebody tickle that ivory, man. Folks, they get lost on the beat. The one and the four, they can't find it. You need somebody. And then they just, well, you know, then they can play here and play there. And it's, okay. Because we come to church to sing. A lot of us didn't come to worship God. We came to be entertained. Because just like these people, when Moses and Aaron say, come to the prayer meeting, they say, we will not come. <laughs> come to the altar. We will not come. Come help us. We're doing something. We will not come up. Then we wonder why. They had to close the church. I don't care how big it was. I was saying the other day, that big old church, this big old church, that big old church, this big old church, they closed down. And you wonder, well, what they closed down? Somebody said, well, the preacher done something. Yeah, but it was more than that. Amen. Because there was an errand there too. You know? And a lot of it that the people would not come. Because they should have came and got on their face and said, Lord, our shepherd done been smit. Lord, divorce in the shepherd's house. Lord, the shepherd sick and died. Lord, but they would not come. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to preach, but I'm going to quit. If the lights of water was off, they would not come with no money, but they would talk about it. <laughs> this spirit is in the earth. Look at verse 15. I got to finish this passage. It says that Moses was very raw. Now, let me tell you something. It said Moses was raw. And you don't have to, well, turn to Numbers 12 and 3, but don't, don't lose that place because we're coming back. Moses was very raw. Now, y'all, you see, y'all want your preacher always to be like your mama. Oh, baby. God got some pastors like that. But some of y'all don't need that. Y'all will walk all over somebody. Oh, pastor. Oh, pastor, I'm hurting so much. You know, they're going to take my car. And they're going to take my house. And, oh, and Billy, I got Billy Bob. Oh, Sally Sue, and we shacking. But, you know, the Lord no. But please, you, you're such a kind fella. Please. Them put a yoke on the pastor. He can't ever get rough. You get rough as soon as you leave the church. As soon as you get with your homies then. You turn up. But what got the Pastor Moses rough was that the people would not come. Did you hear me? The Bible says Moses was rough. It said very wrong. That means he had wrath. He was angry. Now what would make a man like Moses angry? But now look at Numbers 12 and 3. See? Because y'all got the wrong impression of a Christian. Now you ain't supposed to get mad because they canceled your TV show. But when, when all hell is breaking loose in a spiritual realm, you ought to get wroth. You walk with God long enough and you see the devil coming in, stomping on what you dying for, what you giving your life for. You, how many going to let somebody come in your house and you ain't going to get wrong with your Bible carrying self? You love to beat the man with the book. <laughs> Big old Bible beat the dog out of him coming in your house. That was the closest thing to you. I'll beat you with the scriptures. Get you out of my house. Because he's violating something you dying for. 40 hours, 50 hours a week. Well, God put it in the man of God's heart to die for kingdom. Everybody ain't got that. They church goers. So the man Moses is wrong there, preacher. 
But let's look at another part of Moses in Numbers 12 and 3. It says, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were on the face of the earth. So didn't you learn something that you don't mess with quiet people? <laughs> you get your hat handed to you. Somebody quiet, man, you get them riled up. They lie. You know, somebody say, I ain't never seen them like that. What do, you know, somebody you grew up with in school, you still remember the time they just went ballistic, went windmill, beating up everybody like Goliath. And you said, man, we thought they was quiet. Yeah, but you got them raw. They was meek and control, but that's because they was ruling their own spirit. The ones that's always talking is the one you can just dot their eye and they'll fall out. But the man Moses was meek, but when it came to the business of God, he became raw. Let's go back over there, 12, 16. <coughs> and all I'm trying to tell you that a lot of people don't get angry when the enemy comes in like a flood. They get to criticizing. They get to throwing people under the bus. But when Moses got wroth, he fell on his face. Let's look at the word here. He says, and Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, respect not their offering. This is what I'm trying to tell you. God will hear the prayers of a mama, a daddy, but God hears the prayer of his set people. If you are over a women's group, a men's group, you're the pastor, you're over. I mean, let me tell you, so let me encourage you. The thing the enemy wants to keep you from doing, if you're the leader of the usher board or whatever, is to keep you from praying. When God has set you in place of leadership and something's not going right, if you will go to God, God will move. If God puts you in that position, you got to cry upon him. Where we make our mistake is when we try 